Hey, this is Carlos Cavallo. Welcome to datingadviceguru.com's Secrets to Unlock His Heart with me, your happy host. Today, oh, we've got a good one. <laughs> this is the one that uh, I get a lot of emails about, oddly enough, and uh, a lot of questions about the differences between men and women and why women cheat is often never really addressed. It's never really talked about. So let's talk about that today because it's an important topic. There was a recent story about a woman who was caught supposedly cheating in Atlanta. She was on her cell phone at a baseball game. And the two women that were behind her happened to see what she was texting on her phone. They were, I don't know if they were using the Zoom function on their, on their phone, but they basically saw that she was texting some uh, interesting messages to a guy. Yeah, stuff like, I will be naked, laying on the ground, and stuff like that. And uh, they actually went so far as to write on a uh, roster the uh, message <clears throat> that your wife is cheating on you and you need to check on it and they gave it to the guy and supposedly the guy also texted him back and asked for uh, the a copy of the pictures that should they had now a lot of people are saying okay is this real is or this is a hoax um, and there's a lot of criticism also should these women have been butting in there should had should they been um, sticking their nose in where they may not have belonged should they have minded their own business? Well, it's interesting because in the situation where a man and woman are cheating or either or both parties are cheating, you know, it's true that both sides of the fence cheat. Men cheat and women cheat. And believe it or not, in surprisingly equal numbers. It's always been thought of that the man was the cheater. But now it's coming to light that there's kind of like a hush-hush code of silence thing going on with the women's side of it. Um, but the problem is not so much who's doing it, it's why. Why are we doing it? When you're in that situation, when you have a, a relationship that isn't working out for you, you can justify it. This is the thing that, that if you talk to a person who's in that situation, it seems perfectly justifiable. You'll, you'll hear amazing justifications and rationalizations from them uh, for the act that if they weren't in that situation, they would often be condemning and decrying, no, it's horrible, you should never do that, which is an interesting situation. It's, a, it's a, an interesting hypocrisy, if you will. Now, men tend to be the more oblivious when it comes to this sort of thing. They are much more oblivious to their partner cheating. And uh, again, women do seem to have a code of silence when it comes to their indiscretions. They're much uh, better at keeping secrets, too. For guys, it becomes one of those badges of honor. <laughs> I've got three women on the side, and <laughs> none of them know about each other. Now, the reality is, of course, that very few men actually have that situation. Most guys are fairly faithful. Uh, and for the most part, it's the situation that puts us in a predicament of whether or not we stay faithful to the relationship. And are we staying faithful to the person or are we staying faithful to the relationship, which is an interesting question. So when I say why, I'm saying why do we have, why do men cheat and why do women cheat? Why do we do this? Well, for women, and let's talk about that specifically because that's what I'm trying to talk about today, it, uh, it varies anywhere from revenge to boredom, to the thrill of novelty when it comes to just having somebody new. But there's more reasons the deeper you dig. Men typically cheat because they're searching for more sex. They're not getting their libido fulfilled. The relationship they're in isn't giving it to them in some ways, which is why I always recommend that women make sure they are paying very close attention to how much, um, how much sex is going on in the relationship. And with women, it becomes more of a wanting more emotional connection. Now, the emotional connection, if you dig deeper under that, actually becomes something more, more like um, a gratifying or gratification for the woman. She needs to feel appreciated. She needs to feel sexually desired. It's a very deep longing, and it's very often fulfilled by the thrill of uh, an illicit romance. We hunt for the feeling that we're missing. That's really the bottom line. Whatever it is we feel like we're missing or whatever that thing is that we need that we're not getting is what we're typically going for in an outside relationship. And there's also a kind of dysfunction that goes on within relationships that makes it hard for the person to ask for it from their partner. And that by far is one of the deadliest things that can work into your relationship. You have to look out for these blind spots where you're both kind of going la 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 la. You remember those monkeys that were uh, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil? Well, that happens within a relationship too where we think we can't do that. 
you have to be able to talk about anything in a relationship if you want it to work. And I mean anything. I'm talking the most deepest, darkest things. You have to be willing to go there. It's not that hard once you get a partner that you can trust and uh, you establish the right foundation with, which is what I show you with my programs, of course, especially with connect the connection code. Now, women tend to be unhappy in the relationship uh, for them to be able to cheat, whereas men can even stray even if they're happy which again points back to the fact that very often men disconnect the sex from the emotions within the relationship. Now this is something that most women don't understand because it's not something that's possible for them on many levels, which um, leads me to one of the other reasons that women use a, a sexual relationship or a, an affair is that they often use it as a transition to get out of a relationship. It provides the stability of some place to go, a new relationship to jump into, and it also establishes on a certain level their own sexual desirability. They know that they will be fine not being in that relationship. It helps them to get out of it. It's very frequent that this is used that way. Uh, it's Again, is this natural for both sexes? There's a lot of scientific literature that claims that through evolutionary psychology, both sexes are actually predisposed to cheat. For men, it was to get sexual satisfaction and, of course, the spreading of his seed amongst many to ensure the, uh, his genes got <clears throat> perpetuated, that there's another generation of him to go on. For women, it was establishing a, uh, a stability. If she had another guy on the side, if uh, caveman Grok, her current partner, decided to go out and get himself killed by a, a saber-toothed tiger or a woolly mammoth, um, I think also that <laughs> scientifically uh, saber-toothed tigers never actually coexisted with people, but go along with me for this one, okay? If Grok got himself killed out there on the plains, she had somebody that could help her and uh, support her and her offspring. So there's support on both sides of that. But really what, ha what it comes down to for us today, since we're not running from saber-toothed tigers, except for our boss, is that vulnerability raises that chance. Vulnerability is really the thing to look out for when you're most vulnerable, when you're at an emotional low point that could be very threatening to your relationship. Women are also less likely to be spontaneous about their affairs. They're more likely to be thought through and uh, take a longer period of time. Okay, That's another part of the, the process that many don't understand. Men, on the other hand, can be much more spontaneous. It can be a one-night sort of deal, whereas with women, it's much less likely to be that way in a relationship. She's going to be more deliberate and careful and thought, thought of, thoughtful about it. Now, if you want to understand this much more in much more detail and much more clarity, I offer lots of programs for you to understand why guys do this, why women do this, and how you can avoid anything like this. You can basically cheat-proof your relationship, and I teach you and show you in my programs. One of the best things you can do, though, is just get started right now. Don't You don't have to invest in a, uh, a program of mine. Just go out and get one of the uh, easy-to-use mini programs that I put out, and the best one by far right now is datingadviceguru.com forward slash read his signals. That's datingadviceguru.com forward slash read his signals, where you can learn how to read a guy, and you can know what he's thinking. You can know if he's uh, in a vulnerable state. You can know if he's inclined to cheat or not. You can read him and you can be ahead of the ball. You'll never be surprised again in your relationship. This is Carlos Cavallo and I'll be talking again soon. Go on over to datingadviceguru.com forward slash read his signals and come back next week. I've got more interesting and controversial stuff for you there.